All right, so introduction. Uh, my name is Mike. Hello, everybody. Uh, I have a consulting business. We've been in business for a little over four years now, and we provide digital marketing and analytics services, mostly to large technology companies. So a couple examples are uh, Microsoft, VMware, Atlassian, Parallels, those kind of businesses that do uh, either lead generation or e-commerce. Um, I've been using Google Analytics for a little over seven years, and I have an individual qualification, so yay for me. And uh, a fun fact, every time I go to the state of Idaho, I come home with a puppy. It's happened twice. Uh, I'm not allowed, I like, don't allow myself to go to Idaho um, because it's guaranteed that I'm going to get a puppy. <laughs> I don't have any of the dogs oh anymore, <laughs> but there's definitely not enough time to describe that. <laughs> That's like over, they're all alive, and there was a woman involved in one of them, so it's like an over beers kind of conversation. <laughs> um, so you heard a little bit about me. Before we get started here, I just wanted to hear a little bit about you. If we could start with Shannon here in the front, just like your name, and would like to hear what you want to get out of this class. Okay, well, hey guys, my name is Shannon, and I am working on a, an app, so I really wanted to get out of learning how to use Google Analytics well, in terms of understanding the data, um, yeah, understand the data, the retention, and really figure out where the traffic is coming from, how to really look at reports. There's so many, you know, I think, deeper level reports that I haven't even touched the surface on, so it's really cool to know how to use it and what, how to effectively use it, I guess. Gotcha. Um, let's go with Cameron next. Cameron Cross, uh, I've been in the US since November last year, in Australia, at a company called UBEGIN. It's about to launch in the 5th of October. So we've got sort of analytics in place leading up to it, but then when we go live, it's a social platform. So Gotcha. I'm Gina. I have a desk here in Galvanize. I work for GoBoxy. Um, we use machine learning to help you deal with all of your emails to use and appointments. Um, so we're in beta right now trying to figure out who our power users are, who our best um, personas are. So more than just my like, gut and you know, reviews, I want to see some actual hard data based on who people are, where they come from, and the sort of um, retention we get from them. Gotcha. Across the aisle. Sure. So I have uh, like a sort of basic uh, knowledge of Google Analytics, like goals, uh, traffic source, but I just want to uh, see how to uh, yeah, get, get more advanced and build more stuff. Awesome. Hi, I'm Sanya. I work at a real estate tech startup called Agent Desk. And I actually come from an analytical background. I've done investment banking and consulting before. And I just <laughs> gotcha. took up a growth role. So I'm trying to figure out where those two fields merge from this workshop. And also, I have all these experiments planned and would love to actually be able to track how these experiments are doing. Gotcha. So you're no stranger to algorithms and models and all that kind of stuff. Well, Excel financial models, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Bring us home. Hello, I'm June from Buddy Inc. And I'm here to learn uh, specifically uh, goal, goals in Google Analytics and how we can tie that to revenue and tie it further to specific users. Awesome. Well, I think luckily for everybody, just about everything will be covered either at a glance or in a pretty in-depth level. Um, so we should be in good shape there. Just to set the expectations here, by the end of class, 
you'll be able to make PowerPoints work. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I was working on my animations earlier, and I was trying to do sounds, so probably something went wrong there. <laughs> Uh, so we'll be able to build a digital marketing measurement strategy, and I always define that in plain English as the who, what, when, where, why of analytics. Um, and that's the piece of paper, the handout uh, that I sent out earlier. We'll also look at creating actionable configurations and reports, um, really focused on growth. And we'll also talk about how to read those reports. And within reading reports, we're going to focus on acquisition and retention. In terms of an agenda, we've, we're getting through introductions right now, and we're going to be working on analytic strategy. Uh, next, we'll be talking about advanced segments for acquisition as well as retention. Um, and then we'll get into the value of web content, which will be good for you, Vincent. And also talk a little bit about attribution modeling. So we'll be coming up on the end of our time when we get to attribution modeling. So we might move kind of fast, um, but just so you guys know, uh, I'm able to stay after 7.30, and if you guys are as well, I'm more than happy to stay with you and make sure you get your money's worth. Uh, a few things to be aware of. Uh, the reason I keep looking up is because it's the first time I'm not mirroring my screen, and it's like totally freaking me out. <laughs> um, it's a hands-on class, so we're going to work together in pairs. Um, in a minute or two, we're actually going to have people get together, so good pairs here, and then June and Shannon will get you together. Um, so startups have zero time. If you're at an early stage company, probably have less time than you would like. Um, so again, I kind of hinted at this. We're going to go in depth on some things, and other things we're going to kind of cruise at 50,000 feet and just give you conceptual ideas. So just keep that in mind when we're going through the materials. Um, a Google Analytics profile is required. Um, scared me when the two database people walked in and there was no computers. <laughs> um, and the slides will be provided uh, after over email, so just be aware of that as well. Sorry, I'm going to try and... There's something I do, it's called a Sharpie gavel. So we're going to do group activities, and instead of yelling at you because you're all adults, I'm just going to walk around and I'll hit a gavel. And this kind of gives you an update that um, you've got about 20 to 30 seconds left of paired activities, and then we'll gavel again at the end of it. So. Uh, we have a small class. This usually isn't a problem with a smaller class, but um, a lot of times we teach this to a group of 30 or more people, and the gavel comes in handy. Uh, and last but not least, I do something called a triangle test. So a triangle test is just checking for comprehension. And it's not so much whether you know it by heart, the material we just reviewed. It's whether I taught it to you well. So a triangle test, I'm looking for one of three numbers. When I say triangle test, who's understanding this? A three means, Mike, I could teach this back to you. A two means, I get it, but I need a little bit more practice. And a one is on the low end, and that means I'd like you to explain it to me another way. Help me understand. So sometimes you'll just hear me say triangle test, and you won't see anything on the slides, and uh, that's kind of what that means. Um, so let's pair up. There are, so you're e-commerce. Who in here is e-commerce? Or is your website mostly lead gen? Does anyone's website sell things for money besides his? You? All right. I'm going to have you come and pair up. Yeah. Uh, that still works. I'm going to have you pair up with um, June. And then the rest of four of you will be considered kind of like lead gen sites. And this will all make sense later. So if you could kind of pick your stuff up and then sit next to each other. I think you're probably the only person that needs to move. And Shannon. And I'm going to stop looking like a lunatic staring at the slides. There we go. Yeah, they'll be sent out uh, after class or after the workshop. So probably like today or, or I'm sorry, tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 
All right. So let's get started with a quick uh, little activity. Show of hands, who has logged into Google Analytics in the past week? Logged into. All right, that's okay. <laughs> the gavel. Ah. Uh, who has created an advanced segment? Got one. All right. Uh, who has produced analysis for colleagues or management? All right. June's just showing off. <laughs> Who has taken action off of insights based on Google Analytics data? Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. One. So <laughs> the way we always start class is just getting an understanding for how much you are using uh, GA. And from now, for the sake of my voice, I'm just going to call Google Analytics GA. That's what it is. Um, so the first mistake that we always see um, in a lot of our consulting engagements is people tend to shoot first and ask questions later. So there's no strategy behind what are we measuring and to what cadence and why are we even measuring this? Who bought off on this? It kind of just becomes this endless spiral. Um, so a digital marketing measurement plan, or a DMMP, really helps us set, measure, uh, set goals, measure them, and determine success, allows us to kind of tweak and repeat. This is my favorite Hindenburg explosion picture. Uh, the reason we're talking about Hindenburg explosions is because about nine years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I had my first real big kid job out of college. And we got this big client that showed up in November as this consumer electronics client, big global entity. And they said, hey, we've got this big pile of money. We want you guys to go spend it in this way. And I was just the low man on the totem pole, so obviously had no say in this conversation. And all the principals at my company said, this sounds awesome. We're totally going to take this money, and we're going to go do that. What didn't happen was there was no measurement plan put in place. So they handed us an enormous pile of money and said, go spend it. And then there were no parameters for what does this pile of money represent? Um, what would success look like? So we get to uh, the campaign. We launched it in December. We got up in a record-breaking amount of time and launch this campaign, run it through the month of December, we get to January, and we're kind of pulling a recap. So you spent all this money, here's kind of what happened with that investment from uh, a paid media side of things. And we get on this big global call, we've got people from Germany calling in, France, Netherlands, uh, some folks in their Singapore office, we've got London, we've got North America. And uh, we start going through this report, and some angry German guy, who apparently it was his money, who he gave, said, I already looked at this report when you emailed it to me. What did we actually get? Like, this is all just stuff that is happening. But tell me, like, did we get new customers? Did we get a bunch of new email signups? What did we get? And as the low man on the totem pole and the person who put the report together with not a lot of guidance, I said, well, you kind of just got this. Um, what happened next was he started yelling at me in German, which I'm not very fluent in German. And I'm imagining that he wasn't saying anything too nice. <laughs> And the, the gist of it was, German guy starts yelling at Mike, French guy piles on, then we get some Dutch thrown in there, which nobody understands except for him. And uh, it's basically this huge explosion of just, oh my god, we handed these guys money, and now we didn't get anything out of it. Not, we didn't get anything we agreed to get out of it. So they fired us as a client. I almost lost my job. And at the end of the day, it was something that stuck in my head of, you always need a digital marketing measurement plan. Doesn't matter if it's for ongoing activity or for campaign activity. You need to be able to set the, the who, what, when, where, why, and hows of analytics. And you need to get stakeholder buy-off on that so you don't get yelled at in a bunch of different languages you don't understand. That's what you took away from that story. That's exactly what you're supposed to. <laughs> Um, so in creating a measurement plan, the first big question that we tend to talk about is, what does success look like for our website? Is it a purchase? Is it a subscription? Do we want to capture a real estate lead? Um, do we want to get a sign up for the product? That's a good way to kind of begin to position uh, the conversation. Going a little deeper, you can say, OK, why does our site exist? Uh, more specifically, what has to happen for a site visit to be deemed a success? And how will we measure success or failure? So this is kind of where Google Analytics comes in. It's the how. It's that tool that provides you that data. So let's do a group exercise. We'll use a, 
a website that most people probably know. It's Mashable. Um, so just feel free to shout out. Don't worry about talking over anyone. There's only six of you anyways. Um, somebody shout out, what do you think the business objectives are for a website like Mashable? What do you think they're trying to accomplish? Page views, traffic, return readership, all great examples, yeah. Mashable's free. The more people that show up, the more ads they get to serve, the more money goes in their pocket. Um, so I kind of cheated and just described a little bit, but what do you think has to happen for a site visit on Mashable.com to be a success? And then alternatively, what do you think would be considered a failure? Again, feel free to just shout out. Failure Sure. Totally, yeah. I read this awesome story. My whole world's got to know about it. Good examples. So we're going to speed through the types of websites. In general, all websites tend to fall into five categories. You've got e-commerce, meaning you sell something on your website. You've got lead gen, which means you're trying to collect user information. Probably going to hand that off to a sales team, and they're going to go call on those leads. We've got content publishers. That's our Mashable example. Uh, you actually hit the nail on the head with a subscription to a feed or a share on social media. Um, online information or support. My favorite example is like the American Heart Association. So they don't sell hearts, um, but they have information about heart healthy living, um, heart health in general, um, doctors, surgeons, all that kind of information. And then last but not least, product branding. So my the easiest way to think of a product branding website is a mobile apps website usually land, there's a solid color on the background, and it says, enter your phone number here, and we're going to send you a text to go download the app in the App Store or the Android market. So what we're going to do now, and I've got an example up here. Keep in mind, this is purely fictional, and I'll walk us through it here. Um, but it actually directly matches up with the worksheet that you have in front of you. So we are going to write out a digital marketing measurement plan. And before we get started here, just keep in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you can come back and edit it later. You can ask me questions via email or uh, over Twitter after this class. Feel free. Um, but we just want to get started today. So the five steps are identifying your business objectives. That's the big horizontal hamburger looking box on top. Identifying website goals. So what actually has to happen on the website? Uh, writing down key performance indicators. So these are named metrics for success, which we'll get into more later. Um, set numeric targets. So a good example would be, to be successful, we need 1,000 people to buy from us every month. That'd be a good example. And then we'll actually identify Google Analytics segments. So the exercise that you're going to do in pairs, this is the first time I'm going to send you off in pair groups is identifying your business objectives. And I'll do it with you as well. So I'll start. Here's my big hamburger. And for the sake of my life and the fact that I'm always on airplanes, I'm going to run a business called Mike's Bermuda Airlines. So at a 50,000 foot view, I'm trying to answer, why does my Caribbean Airlines exist? And keep in mind, this is very high level. Um, so my example would probably be to safely get people from A to B in Bermuda. That's as simple as it needs to be. It doesn't need to be the fastest, the fanciest car airline carrier. It just needs to be, we need to take off and land without anybody dying. And that needs to happen generally around Bermuda. That's the business objective. So let's take about 60 seconds, and everybody, for your own product or website, think about business objective. It's very much the why do we exist, yeah. Um, so it's yeah. like the big vision. The big vision, yeah.
What? Yeah, I think so. I came in this room somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> I've got one more other. <laughs> yeah. The catch. We're launching early next month. So we're gonna do. All right. So about thirty seconds, and keep in mind it's a, a paired activity. So feel free to like chat with each other after you have a second to write things down. All right. The gavel is spoken, so wrap up your conversations. <laughs> so let's hear, um, let's hear from somebody, maybe from Vincent. Uh, what is the business objective? Talk to me high level. Totally. Uh, so my overall business objective is to make life easier for real estate agents. Very good. Nice. Um, but and the website goal in itself is to make people download the app. That's what allows me to do that. Perfect. Well, you're starting to head into uh, our next step. So in the, the worksheet that you have in front of you, it goes from top to bottom. And what we want to do now is identify some goals. And what goals are is they're essentially website goals. They're strategies to accomplish your business objective. So if you want to make life easier for real estate agents, um, a good example of a goal would be um, provide all listings on Craigslist automatically on your, your website. I totally just made that up. Um, but that's a good idea of a goal. Um, to talk you through what Mike's Bermuda Airlines goals would be, um, it would probably be, um, now we're starting to get to safe air travel. Um, we're starting to talk about, um, let's see, a couple examples would be um, become top three destination, I'll shorten that, um, for Bermuda. You and the other competing airlines. These are good examples of website goals. Um, another goal would be I'm probably going to sell tickets online. So a goal would, for my website would be I need to have a website that's going to sell tickets online. So again, going off into your pair groups and keeping in mind that um, it's a group activity, so feel free to chat. Why don't we take another 60 seconds and for your own site, let's talk about website goals. Or you to, as pairs, talk about web cycles.
No, we're going to get to yeah. revenue goals, yeah. Uh, you want to be right on this side. Oh, I'm on the right side. Oh, you're on the correct oh, okay. side, yeah. So I think you might want to... Yeah, the other side is just a reminder for when you leave the class of what the heck those things are. <laughs> Which I should have told you guys in advance. Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, so about 30 seconds left. Take your time. All right, let's wrap up that thought. Gavel has spoken. <laughs> um, all right, so on to the next piece of our worksheet, um, and then we'll go back into groups here very quickly, is let's identify some KPIs. So a KPI, for those who aren't familiar, stands for Key Performance Indicator, and it's really a named metric for success. Um, so you can see in my hypothetical example up here, um, branded search engine traffic is an example. Um, home tours is an example. I think this came off of a marketing plan for a Redfin-like company, so they were trying to book home tours. Um, visitor loyalty, which Cameron mentioned earlier, how often do people come back um, with the Mashable example. So for Mike's Bermuda Airlines, I think KPIs, we talked about selling tickets online. Um, we'd probably start talking about like e-commerce revenue would be a KPI. Um, let's see, we could be number of email newsletter signups would be a named KPI. Notice that we didn't actually apply a number there. Uh, another good example would be safe air travel. So we could say, um, you know, top 90 or top safety rating in class. That would be another great KPI for my mythical Bermuda Airlines. So again, I'm going to send you back into pairs here. And if everybody could start thinking about what are the KPIs. Um, and before I do that, a little tip. The KPI is probably something, not at a numeric level, but something that a CEO would ask about. So like, how much money are we making on our website um, with Mike's Bermuda Airlines versus how many people pick up the phone and book their flights? Um, so you notice that that CEO didn't ask for a specific number. He just wanted to know generally like, how many people are doing that versus this? Um, so again, let's take another 30 sec or 60 seconds and dive into KPIs. Not doing well? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they'll get emailed out from um, Galvanize. Oh, yeah. And then they'll also include my contact info. So as you go through them and do some of these exercises, I'm sure you'll have a question or like, could you clarify this? Because I don't know what you're talking about. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, of course. Feel better. Sorry, buddy. I know. At the 30 second mark. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, June, as Cameron leaves, I'm going to partner you up with Shannon because Gina's leaving at 7. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> eventually we'll be back to an even number. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh -oh. Are you representing Bunny Inc. here, or are you specifically one of the products like Voice Bunny or uh, Article Bunny? Uh, of course. Hey, Cameron. Uh, so, Bunny Inc. is now, our goal for Q1 is to now uh, consolidate. So everything okay. is going to, if Voice Bunny is going to all be consolidated under Bunny, BunnyInc.com slash Voice Bunny. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a, big, it's a big undertaking. I've been pushing it for a while. Yeah. And our goal is eventually to get Bunny.com. Um, it's currently being squatted by some guy who won't return our emails. So. I'm sure, yeah. So, but our goal is to eventually get it. So we want to eventually do Bunny.com slash articles slash logos. Right, right, right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so we're going to consolidate. And you're basically going to get an instantaneous SEO boost by redirecting all of your traffic. We actually just did that for one of our clients. They acquired a business and we just redirected everything. And it was like overnight they got, went from like 1,000 visits to like 200,000 visits. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right. Um, Let's, uh, instead of doing the shout out exercise, let's keep moving. So now in your digital marketing measurement plan, it's time to identify some targets. So targets are defined as numeric values that determine success or failure. Um, so we're finally talking about numbers, like all this like high level, like what if, and we're kind of like our mission is that. Now we're gonna talk about numbers. So the exercise in getting together will be to set some targets. So with my Bermuda Airlines, I had talked about um, website goal, selling tickets online, KPI would be e-commerce revenue. A target could be, I need to make a million dollars a month or no one gets paid. Or n well, not everyone will get paid. It's probably a better way to put that. Uh, we talked about number of emails. So, so we want to get email signups. Okay. Um, based on some of our math, we know we need 1,000 people to sign up for our email newsletter every month. Uh, top safety rating, now it comes down to, um, let's see, like a top 90% or 90th percentile safety rating. So that becomes our number. If you go under this number, you failed. If you exceed it, you've succeeded. So let's again go into our pair groups and talk about some targets. Um, a little tip is if you're unsure how to set a target, look at your analytics account right now and just get an idea from a historical standpoint what you already do. Um, and then a safe way, it's not the best, but I'm just giving advice. Um, a safe target is adding 10% to what you currently do. Um, that doesn't obviously take into account a lot of variables, um, but just to kind of get you started, if you have no idea how much you could go up or go down, um, use some historic year-over-year, month-over-month gains to set those numeric targets. I'll partner with you. I'm going to partner Mike. <laughs> um, for something like this, if I do a, a compare year to previous year, right? Yeah. Um, I, there used to be like this little button that would let you like if it's a low quantity, like the statistical significance, I think. Like Was it sample size? Yeah, sample size, yeah, yeah. Sample size, no, it depends on the report you're in. Uh, so some report data, you'll see it, it's like this big yellow, like highlighted thing, yeah, yeah. and it'll say this is sample data, or the data's been sampled, and it represents X percent, and then it'll give you uh, like a whole value. Uh, so it'll say like this represents 40% sample data, and you're looking at 100,000 people. Or an easier one is 50% at 100,000, which means you're missing another 100,000 users' worth of information, you know? So if it's not there, then what is the default? It means that you're looking at your entire... Uh, oh, so it's not even a sample size, you're looking at everything. Yeah, you're, just, you're getting everything. It wasn't sampled for any reason. Oh, it's this one right here. There it is. Yeah, this thing. Oh, let's see. Oh. So you changed the reports? Is that why that appeared? No, because I created, used the segment of users. Oh, I see. 
Uh, huh. And we're talking about two different things. But you can do the sample size thing. <laughs> okay. cool. Yeah. All right. Um, let's do about 10 second countdown and then have some of the folks here shout out what their targets are. All right, Shannon, what's the deal? What's your targets? Um, I have 30 signups a day. All right. Um, 500 visits per blog and 550 visits per Awesome. So you want a lot of the same people coming back, and you're trying to get 30 signups a day. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Anybody else want to share their targets to give an idea? You're right. Two would be too many. Let's do one. <laughs> I'm glad we all agree. All right. Last but not least, and this is the final part of your digital marketing measurement plan, we need to identify segments in GA. So in plain English, segments are essentially a group of people or a cohort. Um, my favorite example is the Harvard Law graduating class of 2015. It's a group of people. They went to Harvard, they went to law school, they finished law school in 2015. That represents a segment. Within Google Analytics, you'll end up seeing much different segments, but good examples could be um, location, uh, types of traffic sources, um, site tools used. So for example, the search feature within your website uh, could be repeat visitors, a segment you could be comparing first time visitors versus somebody who's been to your site 10 times. So with my Bermuda Airlines, as we kind of wrap this crazy airline idea up, um, we could do segments. I want to make a million dollars a month in e-commerce revenue. I probably want to focus on North America as a geographic segment. And I also probably want to focus on southeastern United States. Um, we probably also want to focus on eastern Mexico and Central America. So that's a good example of a segment. It's a way that you're going to look at your analytics data. Um, you could see number of newsletter signups. Uh, we wanted to get, our target was 1,000. So 1,000 could be, for example, uh, could be 1,000 on specific pages. So I'm writing specific LPs, which is landing pages. You could have a dedicated signup page. You could have a small, tiny signup button on your home page. You might want to segment that out and see, hey, how does one of these pages do versus another? Um, so that would be a good example of a segment. Something that I'm not going to use with my Bermuda Airlines example, but that is up here, is document type. Great example. In plain English, that should really say media type. So as we start looking at goals, KPIs, and segments, what types of media help accomplish your goals and hit your targets? Could it be videos? Could it be white papers? Could it be um, a poll or a quiz? Those are kind of examples of like media types. So this is our last part at the bottom of your worksheet if you want to take the last 60 second pair, uh, paired up period and start thinking about some segments. Mm -hmm. That happen when a custom when a visitor turns from somebody who has never made a purchase to somebody who makes a purchase. Okay. How would I do that? So, oh, we had emailed about this, hadn't we? You could do it a couple ways. You could create an advanced segment, which is actually what we're going to do. Not that exactly. Yeah, you can, we can wait for that, but I've been playing yeah. around with. User equals zero transactions, or user equals one transaction. Yeah, yeah. Which works, but then I don't like. I don't know. Does that mean that this person has only made one transaction? But which session am I looking at? Like maybe he came back and. 
Yeah, because the way you do the segments, you can either do it at session level or user level, and you'd want to do it at user level. Um, one of the ideas I think we'd emailed about was, um, uh, let's talk about 15 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> uh, one of the ideas we emailed about was if there is a like, confirmation page for creating an account, you could create a condition, which is created an account and um, was a new visitor or whatever, um, and the transactions is greater than or equal to one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Like you were there. I, I remember we talked about this. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to it. All right, we're coming back. You guys are the loudest group, by the way. I'm totally joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually very, th very grateful. Um, a lot of times I do these classes, and coming back from the gavel is like pulling teeth. So you guys are doing awesome. Um, keep chatting. I'll ask a question to check for understanding here. Um, what do you guys, <laughs> we're not going to triangle yet. <laughs> um, what do you think could be misunderstood about the concept of segments? Like what could be tough to, to understand? I understand my question could have been tough to understand too, the way I worded it. <laughs> Or does is segments generally make a lot of sense, like the way that it was explained and how you're going to apply it? Yeah, this makes sense. Yeah. All right. So Shannon jumped the gun. We are going to do a triangle test. <laughs> so let's see. Who understands segments, triangle test? Three means, Mike, I'll teach it to you. One means, I'd like to hear it again. Two means, I'm OK in the middle somewhere. We've got a European three over here, counting from the thumb. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you mean creating a segment, or what is the purpose of the segment? Just generally understanding the purpose of it, yeah. I'm going to go with an American three, all right. <laughs> all right, another European three. Now we're talking. Two? All right. I go with 2.5. 2.5. We'll round it to 2.5 and okay. say that you generally understand it pretty well. <laughs> Perfect. So you've created this digital marketing measurement plan. Uh, I know a lot of times at startups, it's small organizations. So as you take this piece of paper, um, continue to fiddle with it. I also have a, an interactive version that you can type on if you want after class. And the thing that I suggest is to really think about this over a couple days and get this filled out to a point where it looks something like this, minus all the carnival colors, and actually take it to the key stakeholders at your company show it to them, and get them to buy off on it. Uh, a lot of times, I will print it out, and I will have them physically sign it. Um, stakeholders could be, obviously, colleagues. It could be management. It could be investors. Obviously, they're probably pretty interested in what you're going to do and what you're going to accomplish. So um, that's just kind of a piece of advice. Of This is something that is a tool for you past just your own use. Um, it says before we take our first break, but it's only an hour and a half class, so unless somebody wants a break, we'll probably just continue through. Um, a question for the group. How do you determine a business objective if you don't sell something on your website? What would be kind of your thought process there of a business objective? Remember, that's the vision. Yeah. You could say your goals. Business objectives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Business objectives. I think you're a little farther down in our measurement funnel. Business objectives would be like in a previous class, I had a student and she had a website that sold boots. So her business objective was to become the number one place for people to buy boots on the internet. So that's not the answer to this question, obviously. Um, but that's why we're posing the question. If you don't sell something on your website, if you just are looking for user signups or user activity, you know, what, could, what could help you determine your business objectives?
too granular. <laughs> Oh, Gina said that because we both are huge fans of BarkPost.com, which is the number one source of dog-related information written by dogs. <laughs> and uh, that is a good example. Another good example would be like Mashable. They don't sell anything on their website directly to the site visitor. Um, so they're determining their business objectives. They'd say, well, we're trying to get more visitors so we can serve more ads, and that's where we end up making our money. So. Um, we should really look at things that get us more people to our website. That would be a good example of uh, something that would affect a business objective. Uh, this is a yes or no question. Are goals represented by a numeric value? Goals. No. Yes. no. <laughs> Uh, and last but not least, what's the difference between a target and a KPI? So the KPI is you're directly in the middle row. Target is this thing with numbers here. What's that? Perfect. You totally caught that comment that I just made <laughs> saying numbers. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so um, we're going to shift now and actually open up Google Analytics and start using that. Um, so get excited. Um, Shannon and June, one of you should move so you can buddy up. I think so. You'll all be on one side. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Gina actually works here. So she would know stuff like that. <laughs> so we'll give, um, why don't we call it like three or four minutes if anyone else needs to do just a super quick break. Yeah, have fun at Soda Peas. The best. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See ya. So, June probably understated how well he knows Yukai because they actually were partners in a business. Oh, yeah. what business was it? Uh, it was, I believe, when they started Reward Me up in Mountain, or down oh, in Mountain View. Okay. Yeah. You've got another Reward Me fan. I figured since they said they were using the wedding, what was Yeah, I discovered that if you Google the phrase Google Timer, it gives you a timer, <laughs> and oh. then you can use it. <laughs> Easy. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> um, while we're waiting for her to come back, I gave you guys whiteboard markers, and you can actually draw on the tables if you want. Yeah. I didn't get one. Give me one. Thank you. There we go. We've got different colors, too. We've got orange, uh, brown, which goes with orange. It's very Halloween y. Cool, <laughs> You want, oh, I just gave you two the same thing. <laughs> Quick question, like, Absolutely. Most of the traffic on my website, I don't, I don't choose to do anything. It's just like this Wait, page. What do you want to display. Now? Yeah. What is it? Uh, display would be AdWords campaigns from like display, oh, like yeah, banner yeah, ads, yeah. Do you run AdWords yeah, campaigns? Yeah. yeah. I, that was a small one. Like, I wouldn't call you real time. <laughs> No worries. An article written, how much is it to write? Get like a dating article written. A what? 
interesting article. Mm, depends on the length. How, how, what's the length? Well, it's just like <coughs> average size of 400 words, maybe. Oh, for the pricing. <coughs> uh, so you can get it for $49. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. You guys have a special timing for. Um, oh, yeah, you can get it delivered at $40. Cool. You can check your <coughs> Any other questions about what you're seeing? What's that? No, it's like, I mean, oh, nice. I just said, I, I use it mostly for my clients, so I don't use it on my, uh, on my website. Like, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'm testing stuff like Google Tag Manager, all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we that's like, that's, that's usually like that where I start to you know, like confuse, like set up Google Tag Manager, like this kind of stuff. Like it's a framework all the time. It's yeah. I had a lot of issue with that, but I said, I guess it's more like a further along the road, like, like. Yeah, GTM is something we, um, we got a 20 seconds. Uh, GTM is something that we deploy on pretty much all of our clients' websites. Um, and you're right, there's not a lot of support around it. Um, there is a, a course that you can take from Google that walks you through and it makes you Google Tag Manager certified. Oh, right. It doesn't mean that everything you do will work. In fact, you know, quite the opposite. So it's an online course? Correct, yeah, at, at your own pace. Um, it's, it'll, free? It'll, it's free, yeah, yeah. 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 It'll provide you with a, a certification and um, it just gives you a better understanding of like how GTM works yeah. um, and how you can use it because it's kind of like this tool that can do anything, but yeah. it's also, Without that, without any support, you kind of like try and do stuff, and when it doesn't work, it's really frustrating, you know. All right, um, so we're at uh, about seven o'clock. Uh, we start about ten minutes late, so I'm figuring we'll go till about seven forty or seven forty-five. If that's okay with everybody. Okay. Uh, as I told Cameron, anybody, if you have to split out, you'll get the slides and you'll have access to email me and, and we can chat about anything that you have uh, questions about. Um, so now what's going to happen is we'll be transitioning between slides and Google Analytics. You'll see me do this a lot. I'll try and give you a warning, uh, especially if you're like scribbling down a note. Um, but just wanted to let you know that we're actually going to get into the analytics platform now. Um, we're going to make the assumption that you already have goal tracking uh, set up. And as we start actually using Google Analytics and creating configurations, this is very much a how things work kind of session. So while we may create things that are somewhat useful for you, but not exactly what you want, it's really the principles that we're trying to take away here. So you can walk away from this class and say, OK, we created that one thing that was kind of what I needed, but I need to adjust that or this. I'll be confident in doing that on my own. Um, we're going to go very much from a beginner. So at the Digital Marketing Measurement Strategy, or the DMMP, it was very high level. We barely got to actual target metrics. Um, and now we're going to accelerate a little bit and move into more of like an intermediate or even a, an early advanced role with Google Analytics. So as you walk away from class tonight, you'll actually have configurations and reports set up that you can look at tomorrow and actually start drawing insights from. Cool. Yeah, that's the goal. Um, so in terms of what we're going to do in the next 30 to 40 minutes, we're going to be learning how to draw conversion-centric insights. So show of hands, who has a conversion set up in their Google Analytics profile? I don't even know if I do. <laughs> it so would, there's conversions at the bottom, is that it? Yep, at the very bottom, this thing that says conversions and goal conversions. So I think we went 50% there. All right. Um, so when we're talking about drawing conversion-centric insights, um, a lot of those things won't necessarily be possible unless you have a conversion set up. 
So as we go into each exercise, anyone that doesn't have a conversion, I'll walk around and we can spin up something that's just like a test conversion. It doesn't mean anything, but it at least allows you to kind of play around. Okay. Um, we're also going to talk about determining the value of web content and then getting a little bit into attribution modeling. Um, so we, for conversion uh, centric insights, we're really going to be working with advanced segments. So if you're in Google Analytics right now, and I'm switch, switch coming. I know that wasn't a very good like alert. Uh, let's pick a good account. Um, so if everybody's in Google Analytics, yes. This button right here that says all sessions, I'm actually highlighting or trying to highlight. You can click on that and a drop down pops down. So everybody, bam, hit that drop down right now. The next thing we're going to do is there's this big red button that's just screaming to be clicked on. It says new segments or new segment. You're going to click on that. And you'll see a screen that looks a lot like this. Um, you can see on the right hand side as I switch back to the analytics platform, it says 100%. Because I haven't added a segment, which is kind of like in plain English, it's kind of a view of looking at your data. So segments could be, like for this client, for example, they get a lot of traffic from their Facebook page. So we created an advanced segment that was, came from Facebook, but it wasn't an ad, and they looked at more than five pages during their visit. So we're basically looking for people, yeah, we have a lot of traffic from Facebook, but how many of those visitors actually look at a lot of pages? So that's kind of the exercise we're gonna go through right now. Um, so the exercise working in pairs and I'll run around and we'll create some, some dummy conversions is let's create a segment. In this example, you can see that I picked Facebook traffic. So anyone that comes from Facebook, we want to look at. Um, on the left hand side, you can see your options are demographics. If you have advertising features turned on in your account, uh, you've got technology. So this gets into browser, what type of mobile device, that kind of stuff. You have behavior, so number of sessions, days since last session, session duration. Um, you have date of the first session. You can look at traffic sources. And then underneath there's advanced, so there's sequences, which means these things need to happen in a step, like one, two, three. That's considered a segment. Um, and then there's also conditions, which is basically build your own. Do anything you'd like. So. Before I send you into your pair groups, for example, let's create, let's create one together. Um, who has something that they'd be interested in knowing? And segments from your DMMP could be the segments at the bottom here. Could give you a good idea to start. So. How is this pulled, by the way? So if I want to know all the female people that hit my site, is this a cookie that's dropped in? In plain English, yeah. Um, what they're doing is they're piping that demographic data over from AdWords. Okay. So anytime people are serving ads, um, they're serving ads to a large number of people or users who are signed into their Gmail account. So if you guys remember years and years ago when you made a Gmail account, you probably put your birthday, your gender. Um, so now all of a sudden Google, from an advertising standpoint, knows how old you are and your gender. Mm -hmm. So they're able to bring that into analytics. Um, and it's not 100% accurate, but they'd like to tell you that it is. <laughs> and it's really interesting, because for me, we have more females signed up than males, but it says only thir we could, we could say that this is 13% of my users are female. So you're saying male? Because maybe it's more unknown. Oh, maybe more unknown. Oh. So when you start creating this, let's use that example. See how I check female? Yeah, female, and what this is saying is, we just went, this number used to say 100, now it says 38%. Yeah. So you're beginning to actually narrow down. Um, narrow down. Um, and then you could even, go ahead. I have a segment. Yeah, let's hear your segment. So I've been trying to find people who land on a homepage. Okay. <laughs> and at any given time during that session, 
it doesn't have to be sequential. Uh, I, I was looking at sequence, but ah, okay. it doesn't have to be sequential. But land on the host page and go to our search page at any given point of that session and make a purchase. Okay, so you could do, let's see, home page visits plus search. See how I'm naming it in the top left corner? Uh -huh. Plus search, plus, I'm just going to put dollar signs. So landing, landing page contains slash. When, anytime you see slash in Google Analytics, they're talking about your home page. That's just the way that they describe it. Um, so you said landing page. Um, you could say performed a search. Oh yeah, you'd want to do it exactly matches. Good point. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you could say, so we're saying exactly matches a home page visit is where you landed, uh -huh. and you said you wanted a site search, right? Um, so category, you probably wouldn't want that. Um, so this behavior, this these green thing, is your internal site searches. Anything that people look for within your own website. So any any page that they've been on, or that they've made a search. That they made a search. Okay. Like on your website, not coming from a search engine, but physically on your website. Okay. If you could be physically on the website. Mm -hmm. um, so you. That would need some sort of integration, no? Or you can just link it. Uh, most uh, in the admin panel of your analytics account, most uh, of the accounts come with that box enabled, and if it's not, you can just go to admin and then site search and turn it on yourself. It's like literally just the click of a button. So well, that's kind of a nice thing about Google Analytics. Yeah, any searches that have been performed there, that'll uh, they'll pull that in and they'll give you the term. So let's say search contains. Um, this is not going to work because it's not your account. Um, I don't know, voice, I don't think that's going to work. What if we bring it up in, like, instead of saying search term, then how about that go to our pricing page, you know, that have seen the pricing page? Oh, yeah. Maybe that, because our search page is a, you know, if we can find, see their behavior and see, like, they touch this page, is there a way to do that? Yeah, I think you would want to do still landing page, the way that we have it exactly matches. And then you could do page, or no, page contains whatever the URL is. See how I hit slash and all of these things just popped up? You could grab your URL there, um, and that would give you that information as well. So a good example of creating a segment. Correct, yeah. Yeah, it would go across both which sounds like it's of interest to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to do a couple things here. We're actually going to split the group. Um, the first is um, for e-commerce or goal conversions. We want to create, uh, working in pairs, we want to create uh, a new versus returning segment. So with e-commerce, there's actually uh, a nice report here. Let me cancel. There's a nice report, and let me get to an e-commerce site. I promise this will all make sense. So we have conversions, e-commerce, sales performance, and in comparing new versus existing, when you actually hit all sessions, you don't have to create all these advanced segments from scratch. You can actually take advantage of, there's about 40 or 50 that are just pre-built into your analytics platform. So if you go to the search box in the top right and hit new, you'll notice it says new users. You want that. Then I can click on, instead of all sessions, you click on all sessions and say returning. So now you're looking at returning users. And all of a sudden, you're able to compare. This is an e-commerce client. Um, all sessions, so all the e-commerce activity versus new versus returning. How does Google Analytics calculate a new user? Uh, it's somebody that's been cookied. 
And so if they clear their cookies and then revisit your site, they would actually show up as a new user again. Uh, um, but cookied within what sense? Oh, I think the Google Analytics snippet is good for 180 days. I'm not sure they're legally allowed to track you for longer than that. So they'd have to show up at least a second time within 180 days to avoid going back into the new user's bucket. All right, so June, why don't you two work together because you have goal conversions set up, right? Mm -hmm. And just do some comparisons on new versus returning, right. and then we'll really quickly spin up a goal conversion. And you needed a goal conversion too, right? Yeah. All right, so if you want, do you mind if I reach over? All right, so I'm just gonna create like a nonsensical one. Goals. Oh, looks like you have goal conversions. I'm using our admin account. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so you do have conversions set up. Okay. So you're able to do um, that report where you can click on both of these. Oh, sorry. I do not use a touch screen. <laughs> and you can click in the search segments box. You can type new. And then over here on the one that's gray, you can add a second segment after you do this. Um, I think scroll down. Scroll down? Correct, yeah. Or keep it highlighted, but just scroll down. Where is scroll down? Oh. There you go. You always have to hit apply and let it think for a second. So now you're just looking at new users. So 42% of your new uh, conversions come from people who brand into the site. Okay. Then you can click on, oh, I did it again. Okay. And then hit returning users, and okay. it'll give you an idea there. Okay. All right, do you mind if I whip up? Sure, yeah. Just like something that will mean nothing at the end of this. Goals. Oh, you do have that, but let's pick an easy one. Um, where is it? Is the new visitor the same as the new user? Yeah. Uh, submit. We're going to call it that, but let's not. Yeah. Create an account. Sure. Destination. So we're just going to say anyone that like. It's your home page. And that just always means home. It's like a default. Yeah. It's something that you're probably going to want to like delete later. Um, but oh, it's not going to give you any data until later. The problem with Google Analytics is it's not retroactive. So because uh, we made that, it's still like, well, OK, but nice. you just made that. So yeah, yeah. Okay. that's not my problem. <laughs> okay. Um, but you could be able to do the same thing where you, um, you know, looked at new versus returning okay. and get an idea um, like once I you do have like a conversion. Right? Yeah, totally. Oh, it's a subdomain? Mm -hmm. Do you have Google Analytics on both? No, so I probably need to have it on both. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's the easiest question. That would be able to answer that question. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a couple tips for reading this report, because I know we just like threw everyone in and then we huddled down. Um, a couple things for e-commerce and goal conversions is you want to avoid sample data. Sample data, as I will show you, is this. Go to e-commerce, you go to overview, and there's this, there's this uh, yellow box that says, hey, this actually only represents a portion of all user activity. So it's actually not the whole number. Like if you were to look at your um, e-commerce cart, the e-commerce cart would be higher. 
So a tip there is when you're doing e-commerce or goal conversion tracking is making sure that whatever report you look at, see how that doesn't have any sample data notes? That means that you're looking at the whole number. Um, also, a good way to look at it is time to purchase. So days and sessions view, meaning how many days before somebody bought, how many sessions did they uh, go to your website for before they bought. Um, and then a time comparison. So one thing that's kind of nice to do from a conversion and an e-commerce standpoint is excluding times where you had a big promo to kind of get a more standard number. I know it sounds kind of like no duh, but a lot of people forget that. And then you see this huge traffic spike and a year later you forget why you had a spike or a, or a sales spike. And there had to be some sort of big promo or you got featured on a blog um, or on TV or something like that. Um, another advanced segment that we're going to create is uh, called a clean conversion rate. So conversion rate is often inaccurate. And statistically, or the way that Google Analytics does it, it's not wrong, but it gives you a bad look. And the reason is because conversion rate is an easy calculation for GA. They're going to look at number of conversions divided by the total number of sessions. That's your conversion rate. Um, but in reality, a lot of websites have a knowledge base, support pages, um, even a home page that isn't meant to sell anybody, but more just to inform them about what's going on. You know, what is your product or service? So in creating an advanced segment here, um, you can create uh, two different ways to look at it. You can do exclusions. So you could say, I don't want my blog traffic in an advanced segment to show up. Um, that way I get, you know, it's more informational content. Nobody buys stuff off my blog anyways. I don't want to see it. Um, you can also do what I call combination chow mein, which is grouping key pages together. So if you have more than one product page, you might want to know, you can see them individually by URL. This URL's conversion rate is X. That one is Y. This one is Z. But I kind of just want to know my product pages all up. How are those doing? So in creating that, um, I will, I'll try the combination chow mein route. I'm going to go to goals. Oh, that's not what I'm going to do. Oh, let's do sales performance. We're going to create uh, a new look here. And uh, in that new segment, we're going to say, um, let's see, conditions. Um, so if the landing page dun, 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 contains blo or let's see products, it's going to, you probably noticed that dropdown had a whole bunch of different options. And so now I've got a whole products page. Um, all of that web traffic, only a small, like a single percent of it, actually lands on those product pages. So you can look at product page landings save that segment and get a better idea for people that are actually driven to your product pages or that land there somehow. That's how they, uh, they actually perform for you. So you can see product pages, you know, you've got these huge numbers in the millions for e-commerce revenue, but um, what product page landings shows here is that actually a very small portion of your revenue comes from people hitting that page directly. They need to hit more than one is what the data is telling you. They're, they want to learn about uh, the product or the service. Um, so build your own. We actually skipped ahead and already did that. So everyone give yourself a hand. <laughs> Perfect. Um, a quick review and then we're going to go into our final two um, items tonight. Uh, what part of Google Analytics do you click on to launch advanced segments? Does anyone remember? What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> all right, we'll give you that one. It's, uh, it's the All Sessions button. That's where you're going to drop down and get your option at Segments. Um, and then a little bit of a shout out. Remember, we had this DWMP of the KPIs. Um, which ones did you actually include in an advanced segment? So your, for example, June has revenue, I can't read that. Yeah, revenue oh, SEO. SEO. Yeah, gotcha. 
So a good example would be creating an advanced segment that is revenue from the medium of organic or SEO. Yeah. Um, another good example could be reven uh, a segment, or I'm sorry, a KPI could be revenue from product pages. Um, you know, that example that I've been kind of harping on. All right. How's everyone doing? Um, because as a segment, it has a little bit more versatility. Uh -huh. um, you also, I mean, you could create it as a goal if you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, but something that we haven't talked about is that Google Analytics, I think you only get 30 um, goals that you can create. So eventually you run out of goals. So if you created all these different views of certain activities, you would end up having to call Google and talk about buying Google Analytics Premium, which is really expensive, and they'd love to talk to you about that. <laughs> is, there any, I mean, is, is there any segment or like an advanced segment that like, you, you usually um, would focus on when you start working with one of, I mean, you work with very good company, but with sure, yeah. companies that have like, an image and like, an e-commerce platform, and you feel like, okay, that's usually those segments will give us like, uh, most of insight to optimize the website. Yeah, yeah, the way that I tend to, or that our team tends to start with it, is we like to look at traffic sources first. So you can create segments around anything from a paid visit versus organic versus um, like direct. You know, they, they literally just typed in your um, URL. That's usually, the reason it's useful is because it gives you an idea of their traffic mix. So are they buying most of their visitors or are most of their visitors actually coming there organically? There's a big difference. Um, the conversion rate on paid traffic is usually much lower than that from organic traffic or from another site referral, like from a news source. So that usually will begin to answer the question of, like, how are people getting here? Which then already tells you, oh, if 80% of your traffic is paid, that's actually a problem. That's why your conversion rate is a little bit lower than the industry average, for example. So that's the first report that I look at. Um, the second thing, actually, is what we're going to do right now. Um, which is looking at web, uh, web content. And in plain English, you're really answering like what pages matter on our site and what don't. And when I say matter, we're talking about impact. So what is leading to conversions uh, on our website? So um, there's a couple ways that you can do this. Actually, it's a really good segue. Um, the first way is super basic. And let me get rid of all this. Uh, the first way, which you probably have all seen, is behavior, and then site content, and then all pages. And this will basically just give you, by page URL, uh, how many visits are you getting, uh, what's their time on the page. Entrances basically just means they entered your site from that page. Um, bounce rate, how many of them only viewed that page and then left. Um, exit rate is similar to bounce rate, except it means they could have come from anywhere on your site. It could have been their first or their 10th page visit, and then they exited there. Um, so that's a good way, initially, once you start talking about traffic, you know, which was my first example, um, is trying to figure out how are your pages and your web content performing. Another good way is to create content groupings, which we'll do here in a second. Um, so these are essentially groups of URLs that you're including for analysis. It's kind of like a segment or a cohort. Um, so a, a lot of times you want to see, um, for example, any page that has products in, in the URL or that has blog or that has support, for example. You know, anytime they hit like a support page or a series of pages, you can actually um, track that using a content grouping. So the exercise here that we'll go through is, I need to get into a different profile. Uh, let's see. Is you'll go to admin, and then there's this big button here on the right side that says content grouping. It also, uh, yeah, it should be right here. So the content grouping, you can see I've actually already created a blog view. And this blog view 
when I clicked on it, I'm sorry, let's just create a brand new one. Um, so content grouping, and then does everyone see that big red button? Uh, plus new content grouping. Click on it. I'll call this one testing one, two, three. And you've got a couple options. You can enable it by tracking code, which means some people or a group of people that came from a specific tracking code, you can lump them all together and look at their performance. Uh, you can also do extraction, which means I want to remove all of this. So you could say, I want to look at every page on my website except the support pages. Perfect. Um, you could also do rule definitions, which is what I recommend. Um, so creating a rule set, it'll automatically say rule name. You can name that. The page contains, um, so I'm going to say category sports, because this is a, a news website. They write about sports, entertainment, politics, that kind of stuff. So everybody, give me an eyes up once you've created a category. I'm going to have to go. You're going to have to run? Okay. All right. <laughs> I just have a quick question. Absolutely, um, yeah. If I create a unique URL to track like, which of the growth experiments are working, yeah. is what you showed earlier, is that the best way to do it? To see like the page views like, just for different unique URLs? Of yeah, that could definitely be one way to look at it. Um, you could also create an advanced segment with anything with that URL tracking code that you just mentioned would work as well. So there's kind of two ways to go about it. And if you're doing A-B testing with Google Website Optimizer, yeah. um, there's also a report that's just Website Optimizer um, that isn't very custom, but it'll give you like the high level view in analytics. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Um, I also wanted the interactive one sheet that you mentioned as well. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yes. We'll send that out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, why does it say not set here? Not set. So I'm doing the blog grouping. Um, Sorry, can you hit sort type? Yeah. Oh. Um, I'm not quite sure why your account's doing that. Hmm. Um, so that's creating, just going to keep moving because we're a little bit over time um, and everybody's busy. So that's creating a custom uh, grouping that you can then come back to later and look at specific pages um, all up. Um, last but not least, um, what's kind of nice is that within a content grouping, so I'll go back to analytics. Um, let's do behavior. Um, oh, whoops, content grouping. What's this testing? Um, so you're seeing, I have that same not set problem. But my numbers went down. Interesting. So anything that mentions sports had 80,000 views. Mm -hmm. um, what's nice is that you can actually hit export and then export it to a Google Sheet. And a, I'm not going to actually import, well, I'll import it, yeah. A nice tip is that you can create different content groupings and then export them to a sheet, and it provides you with a little bit more flexibility in actually analyzing the data. So examples are you could compare and contrast on the same screen, because different than advanced segments, you can't pull multiple content groupings at the same time. So you're kind of like stuck. Um, the other thing that we do a lot of is we identify common trends across those content groupings. So we could say, hey, these are different places, but um, anything that talks about this across our whole website seems to do really well. People spend a lot of time on the page. They don't bounce. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good thing for us. So in reviewing content groupings, I know we sped through it, a true or false question uh, GA content groupings only allow you to include specific things. False. False, correct. You can also do extraction, which says, get rid of that. I don't want to see it. Um, another question is, what might be misunderstood by marketers um, in creating and using content groupings? So are there any, in plain English, are there any pitfalls for kind of grouping pages together like that? Yeah. 
traffic or is this one page that's driving all traffic and you think, oh, that blog's really effective? Yeah, definitely. You could kind of, it's known as like putting blinders on. So if you showed content groupings to people, they could look at the blog and say, oh my gosh, like our blog traffic is down a thousand percent month over month, but you're not actually seeing the individual articles that you wrote. Um, so you could kind of get yourself in trouble doing that. Um, so last but not least, and this will be a little bit of um, lecture and a little bit of actual exercising or exercises. So with GA, when you start talking about conversions, they are crediting conversions 100% to the last referring traffic source. That's just how it's default. It's known as last click attribution. Um, so in <laughs> introducing attribution, the idea is that you want to assign credit for sales or conversions that happen on your website to each step along the way or the conversion path. Um, so finding this report, it's at the very bottom. You hit conversions and then attribution, which is the very, very bottom. And then there's something that says model comparison tool. <clears throat> So once you've gotten there, you probably see a whole bunch of stuff that you can click on. Uh, GA defaults to seven attribution models. You can actually see them on the slides. There's a link at the bottom here, um, and you can read about each one of them. Um, but the ones that we find most useful are first interaction, which means what is the first channel that touched the buyer? This is really great for determining awareness. Um, like you had display campaigns going. Display ads are normally lower converting than search ads, for example. But display ads could have been that first touch, and then that individual saw the, the banner ad, and they said, oh, I've never heard of Galvanize before. And then they're going to go and do, perform a Google search. And it looks like the Google search gets 100% credit, but actually with first interaction, it gives you an idea from an awareness standpoint. Um, linear basically means all the channels in the path get equal credit. So say there's five steps before somebody buys your product, and your product costs $100. That means that each, um, each step or traffic source gets credit for $20 of that purchase. And then last but not least, um, time decay. So similar to linear, time decay means that the farther away from the conversion event, like the date that it happened, um, the less value it gets as a percentage. The closer it is, so for example, you click on a display ad last Monday, and then you get an email today, click on the email link and you actually buy the product. The email link will get a larger portion as a percentage of that sale or the conversion value. And then my favorite slide, bringing Billy Mays back from the dead. <laughs> um, similar to what we did with content groupings and with advanced segments, you can actually create your own, what's known as a custom channel grouping. So if you see here at the top, kind of like right in the middle, there's that hyperlink says channel groupings. That's a drop down and you can hit create a custom grouping. Um, so you could name it, name this as a test. And then you could define it as, um, let's say, anything that is from um, so organic, which is SEO, it's got to be from organic and it needs to, uh, let's see, it needs to involve some sort of keyword. So let's say like arts and entertainment, people looking for that, arts and entertainment. Now you can save that and take a look as, um, name this as a test, you can see that for what I described, none of our channels, meaning uh, paid ads or search engines, um, actually met that. It all fell into other buckets. Another example that I made was uh, cost per click. So I want to look at, oh, I'm sorry. You have last interaction, and then you also want to get a second option. So this drop down here, you can do first interaction. And oh, now I think I've just totally fried myself. 
Let's start from scratch. That's not scratch. OK, back to scratch. So we want to look at first interaction and last interaction. You can actually see that it changes here. So with, uh, for example, display, it says the last interaction that a conversion happened was six times. Um, when it was the first touch point, it was actually getting credit for eight interactions, or eight conversions. So again, it comes back to the display example of display is a good like, awareness driver, and it seems that more people tend to see that, and then they'll go and actually take actions on your website. Um, and it's really about asking the right questions. Could be what drives awareness? Um, how many touches does it take to convert? And what are my closing channels? So on the flip side of awareness, what, what do I close with? Um, so in looking at this report, you know, what channels surprised you? Um, was there anything that you didn't expect to see? There you go. <laughs> Affiliates not normally getting credit. If you kind of look at the, the data a different way, it gives you a better view there. Um, so that's actually the end of class. Were there any questions that we had asked at the beginning? Um, we talked a little bit about like CRO and landing page design, talked a little bit about product analytics, which um, we'll pull through in GA. Um, talked about goals with user data, understanding referrals and reporting. Um, now is the last time you'll probably get me just two on one. Is there any other questions that weren't answered through the course of this growth analytics workshop? In the attribution yeah. model comparison, can we use our segments that we've created? You can't. You'd have to create a channel grouping. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess you could do that. And yeah, because now you're getting into any interaction, first, last, or assisting. Um, you could create. Like, would I be able to see this attribution for new users, for example? Yeah, let's try it. Create a new one, uh, include. Oh, here, new visitors is actually an option. Exactly matching, yes. <laughs> new visitors, save the segment. And then, oh, I probably need to. Uh, yeah, yeah, because the numbers are different. You see, you know, 16 on first, first 24 for last. Um, so yeah, you can also do it there. Really, the, the channel groupings or those conversion segments are kind of extensions of an advanced segment. You just can't create a literal advanced segment and drag it over here. You'd have to like recreate it, you know? What about you? Anything that we missed out on? No, no, no. I uh, super, yeah. Like yeah. Awesome. Um, well, I think we're at a good stopping point. Um, you'll get the slides and you'll get the one sheet, which is just a digital version of your DMMP. Um, so you can play around with that. And when that gets sent to you from uh, Galvanize, they will uh, also include my contact info. And okay. feel free um, to hit me up, ask questions. Uh, I know that we covered a lot of information in not a lot of time. So there's probably like a lot of brain wrapping that needs to happen.